In this lesson, we're going to explore the process of creating your own tile and textures inside of 3D Coat. So you can see an example here in the Sculpt workspace where 3D Coat will help you create a group of tiles to which it will allow you to bake all the textures and all the detail onto image maps so that you can use them for seamless tile textures. So let me go to the splash screen and you would want to start with this option surface sculpting you can choose a tiled box you'll see a tool tip that explains the process here that it's going to create four or nine instances of the same quad and whatever modifications you make to the center object it's going to reflect across all of these instances and then once we're done you can go to the file menu choose export and then export along Y so let's go ahead and hit OK so I'll zoom out and what we might do is just click on a primitive in the models palette these are not parametric so if we did want parametric capability we want to go to the primitives tool in the object section and then choose something more appropriate now we have a freeform deformation cube but for our purposes here in this demonstration a standard cube will do just fine so I'm going to go to the navigation bar and I'm going to click the orthographic view in the camera menu I'll choose top and we want to make some kind of arrangement something like this where you've got overlap on one side and a gap on the other so that when you reveal all these instances they interlock with one another and this is where I would probably want to create a new layer I can opt to voxelize it if I want or change it to surface mode and then hit apply go back to a top view if we want we can leave each of these on the same layer or we can create new layers in this case I'll probably go ahead and create a few on the same layer here hit apply this one's spilling over just a little bit here so I may leave a gap and we also want to leave a little bit of gap for the mortar as well so let's go ahead and hit apply and I'll choose the transform tool you can see all of these are on the same layer if I want now I can create either an instance or I can just duplicate this layer and move it down so this center object I'm going to ghost that which makes it transparent And with that done, I could hit duplicate and just continue doing this. I'm going to go ahead and stop at this point and I'll go ahead and delete that. I'll come out of orthographic view. And this is where you might start sculpting your objects once you have them set up in the scene the way you want. So what we could do let's choose some presets for example you can try the trim and let's hide that one and I'm gonna hit my wireframe hotkey and these are way too low resolution at this point so let's go ahead and increase the resolution that's just gonna subdivide these right and I'll turn wireframe back off and adjust my contrast Okay, 
and may also use something like a build up brush just kind of build things up a bit it can be a little bit sloppy that's fine and I'll change my shader something a little bit easier to see And now I'll go back to my trim, or I could choose maybe uh, Polish Crisp, which is very similar to H Polish and ZBrush. Okay, so now let's use stencils and I go to the upper right hand corner. I'm going to choose huge so I can see the thumbnails a bit easier. And I click on one or two. Actually, uh, I kind of like that. So I'm going to. Reset, kind of scale it a bit. And this time I'm going to use something like the gum brush, which is very good for surface level detail. And I'll click auto. A quicker way of going about this if you're in a major rush is to choose one of these selection marquees and just select all the way around your object and close that and so that will quickly fill it in and let's choose another one. Okay, and go back to a brush. And I want to check my depth. I don't want it to be too deep. I'm holding down the control key to add pits. 